Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, the new Mathcad Prime 6.0. Discover the new PTC Mathpad, Mathcad Prime 6.0, an intuitive, easy to use engineering notebook to streamline engineering calculation and documentation. Today's webinar presenter, Emily Pinto, is an application engineer working with PTC's Virtual Center for Excellence, a team dedicated to giving high-level technical overviews and demonstrations of PTC technology. Let me tell you a little bit about Novage. Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. As you can see, this is where we display um, MathCAD 6, the, the brand new MathCAD 6 in our home page. Just search uh, novage.com and you'll be sure to find it. And uh, I also want to let you know that we're all over the social media. So come check us out, uh, follow us, uh, friend us, um, you know the drill. And I also want to remind you that we will be recording the presentation and you can watch it over and over on our YouTube and Vimeo channel. And now without further ado, I'm gonna switch my screen and introduce you to Emily Pinto, our presenter. Take it away, Emily. I think you're muted. There you go. Hi, my name is Emily. Thank you for the introduction. And today we're gonna talk about what's new in MathCAD Prime 6.0. So for the agenda for today, I'll start off by going over some of the challenges that we see in the industry around design documentation, a lot of the reasons why we created a tool like MathCAD and why our customers find it so useful in their design process. Um, and then we're gonna show a brief demonstration and then talk about how we can move forward what this tool might mean for you. Oftentimes it can be very difficult to capture, share, or reuse design intent. Many of our engineering calculations are often created using information and data from multiple different systems. So uh, maybe email and uh, one engineering system, another engineering system, arcane languages, which uh, are oftentimes how old, old data has been recorded. And this is all compounded by poor communication, which leads to a loss of knowledge, especially as a product develops across many updates. We also see a loss of traceability between the initial market requirements and the final design, which can cause a lot of errors that need to be fixed and inefficiencies in the process. So unnecessary delays, unnecessary features, unnecessary problems when it's out with your customers. And there's a big issue trying to standardize this process or tools that we work with on a daily basis. So problems can be introduced due to the design intent stored in all those different locations and missing something, forgetting something, not having the complete information, leading to process inefficiencies and product delays. And many times these have to be started from scratch for different design iterations or new product development. And this is because our engineering calculations are in general unmanaged and uncontrolled. So they're very hard for other people to use. It's very hard to trace and it's difficult to make sure that everything's in order. If our processes aren't standardized from the start, there's a really likely or a lack of design, lack of early design validation leading to a need for rework. Uh, is your design optimized? Is it the best trade-off between cost, strength, time to market, customer requirements, other design requirements? Many times mathematical errors are either caught too late or missed entirely. Uh, leading to a lot of problems in aftermarket service or costly recalls, which you certainly want to avoid. The solution to this and the way that we want to fix this is MathCAD Prime. So this process is really made up of analyzing, solving, documenting, and sharing all from the same tool. So at its base, MathCAD is a digital engineering notebook to perform calculations and manage design intent. This picture here shows this. This is a document with calculations, notes, charts, graphs. It's very visual. It's not a bunch of code and computer programming that you have to try to sort through and try to understand as typically engineering calculations are done in, in some kind of programming, high-level programming language. 
Um, so this isn't to say MathCat doesn't have a powerful engine running at its core. It is a very powerful uh, mathematical engine. But as the user, you don't have to see that. You're going to work in a neat and robust interface. Let the documentation, uh, let, let the, the program do that work behind the scenes. And then you can write all of this out in a way that's easy for you to follow, easy for others to follow, uh, and looks like, like a final documentation might look, um, but you're, you're able to create that while you're doing your calculations. So it's all done in the same step. Talk about some of the capabilities. We have what's called a whiteboard interface, and this is where we put all of our work. So we snap all of our work onto this page. The default is this nice grid style paper uh, that you might see in an engineering notebook. Of course, you have capabilities for changing everything, all of the visuals, and it does the calculations for us. So whatever equations we lay out, as long as we give all the necessary values, it can automatically give us the answers. So uh, it's, it's a, a real-time calculator. So as we lay those equations out, it's going to get those answers for us in real time. Um, and this document has everything built into it. So live math, text, graphics, uh, can even call up other programs, which we will see in the demonstration. And this is an offer calculations. Remember, we do all this to display the design process in an easy to understand manner. It's a very useful feature is the ability to manage units. So if you add nine inches plus two feet uh, times you know, eight furlongs, it understands each of these and it outputs into whatever units we need. So there aren't gonna be any issues with unit conversions, you're not gonna accidentally forget somewhere that your units you know, have switched in the meantime. And one of the big things to note here is that everything is self-documenting. So you do all of these calculations, you include all of this information, and these are the information, this is the information you need to create to, to do your calculations, to, to get to an answer for your analysis. And while you're writing that all out in the tool that's gonna to do the calculation, all of the document, documentation has been done you know, in that same step. So it's all right there. It simplifies your process. And this is very much what you see is what you get. Uh, so different formats for printing and, and everything. Um, it, it's, this is just a page. So if you send this to someone or you print it out, exactly what you see is exactly what the other person's gonna see, exactly what's gonna come out of your printer. Um, so exactly what you see on your page, however you've laid it out, that's going to that's gonna follow it through the whole process. It's always going to look like that until you change it again later. And there's a huge function library. Math notation, solvers, data analysis, statistics, Fourier transforms, all the things that maybe you've studied and have some knowledge of, MathCAD can do all of this for you. Uh, so a really good data engine behind it that knows exactly what functions you're talking about. It's familiar with all those engineering equations and, and mathematical equations. You also have many different plot options. Plotting is very critical to a lot of, of understanding, especially in the engineering world. So you have polar coordinates, contour plots, all right there. Um, and there are live plots. So using whatever data is on the page. So as you update that data, as you change values in the equation, you know, updates to a new answer, that data, the, the plots are gonna update as well. You can change things around, you can move them around and those plots will still update. In the context of what we're working with here, uh, moving forward with MathCab Prime 6.0, there are enhancements around documentation. So the, you have more abilities for documentation. And we've done this by giving users the ability to create their own custom margin settings for whatever purpose, and cool, includes full control over header and footer options. Uh, productivity was another area of focus and the ability to spell check has been improved, including the ability to change the proofing language to whatever language you're using at the time. And we also now have the ability to provide hyperlinks in our calculations and documents. So if you want to link to a website from part of, you know, if you're describing something that you got from a website, you can put a link to that website in. You can link to other pages as you need them, as you get information from them, or provide additional resources for whoever might be viewing this later. Um, so you're have, gonna have that capability now to add hyperlinks right into the middle of your page, uh, just like the rest of your text. We also have more usability, so improving the ability to find and replace elements within our document and expanding the options around printing our documents off of our calculations, including the API method to save as different file types. 
around our chart application, we can now take our plots and zoom to different areas to select what we want the focus to be rather than including any extraneous information. So once we finish our plots, we have the option to save those off as image files if we choose to do so. So now I'm going to move into the demonstration portion and I'll show you what some of this might look like. So let me pull this up. Okay. So here's our, our MathCAD user interface. We have a page you can see here uh, with all sorts of different text and graphics and information. And we have here our, our first equation. And this use case is uh, to, to improve the efficiency of an engine by improve, maximizing the ratio of the volume to surface area for this piston head. So, uh, what we're going to do, we've been given a short description at the top. It has your design goal so that you know what you're working on. Um, and then you have this main equation. So this is, this is a really important equation. This is what we're trying to maximize. So let's highlight that using some of our visual tools. We can choose a color and highlight that very easily. And then, of course, we have this nice description next to it if we need to describe exactly what we're using that for. So maybe that's for our knowledge to remember exactly what that equation was and, and why we had it there. Or maybe for the next person who comes along to say, okay, I understand exactly what, why you're using this. We also define our constants. So these are going to be defined here, and we can use those constants then throughout the whole document. Um, so we have a short description. We have the minimum and maximum of the diameters and of displacement and compression ratio. And then we also have some variables. So you'll see here all of our variables are defined with units. Uh, and this is really important because MACAT does units so well. It knows what unit, units are. It knows what to do with them. It knows how to convert them and carry them through the document. So if we put our variables, uh, if we put our variables in up here and we define them with units, not only can we use that variable later to, to call the value that we've defined, but it calls those units as well. So even if, that's, if it has to convert them for the equation that we've put it in for the answer that we want, that's no problem. It has that value and it knows what units it's in. You see we here, we've included this image. We have a spherical cap that defines where, you know, shows you where H and A and R are, are defined, what, what lengths those are on the triangle on the sphere. Um, and then we have our functions here. So this is a function of height. The surface area is a function of height. And we're going to use those later. So it, later, if we want to solve for volume or surface area, it knows, OK, well, that's pi times diameter times height. So as long as you have the diameter and the height defined, you can do that. Here we have our defined requirements and constraints. This is a really important section uh, and often one that gets lost so easily if you don't have documentation, uh, organized documentation. So these are the requirements and the constraints that we need to make sure that we set against. Uh, so even if you do your analysis the first time, you might have this in mind, but as the product goes through its life, these tend to get uh, lost or confused. These are the first values that get lost and confused. Um, so here we have them defined, we have the values uh, defined on either side so we know exactly what the range is and then we can later on come back and, and make sure that this is within the range so if d you know if our engine displacement is out of range if it's uh, we're going to know that if it doesn't meet our requirement we're going to be able to tell that very easily later on um, to say there's a problem here um, so again these are all written out just like you would in a, a regular notebook if you were writing by hand. And you'll see that that's true here, especially with our functions. These are all written in a easy to understand mathematical format. So it's very easy to put these equations in. This was built for you to do mathematical calculations. So these uh, symbols and, and formats are going to be very, very simple and quick. Um, and, and you're not typing in some programming language to try to do all these calculations. You're writing them out just as you would on a piece of paper. That makes it really easy for you, really easy for others to understand what's going on. Um, and this isn't just written. This isn't just text that we've written here. MathCAD knows that these are equations. And so later on, if we define the variables that are in the equations and we say, What's the, the surface area of the engine block? If we type SA, you know, subscript EB equals, if everything's defined, it's going to calculate that for you. So this isn't, this isn't just text that we've put here. 
um, this is real how the calculations work for anyone who's not familiar. And here we have our volume of our surface area. We have this relationship highlighted because this is an important relationship for the calculations that we're doing. So we're able to come back to that whenever we need to, to say, what are my important equations? Uh, what am I trying to solve here in the end? And now we're getting down into the section. So everything's been defined, laid out. We have our, our constants and constraints defined. Now we have some um, sections that are hidden. So we want to we want to see the plots for these different functions here. Uh, we want to know what the, what the response is. And that might be really important for you to know. It might be just useful for you to know. Might be critical to the answer. Um, but whatever that is, you're going to be able to display it how you want. So if you don't want uh, the, the plots displayed, you can collapse it like it is now. Maybe that's just distracting. It takes up too much space, interrupts the flow, whatever reason. Um, but if you need to make sure that that's seen, if, it, if it's really important for the user to understand, this little um, expand icon, we just click on that and we can see our plots. And this makes it really easy to organize the way that you want to organize it. Um, you can see our plots are very detailed. We have um, the, the custom margins, the custom everything, uh, so that it's laid out the way we want. We can see all of the axes and the, the titles. Of course, we have uh, you know, very sophisticated tools for creating plots. You can do all sorts of colors and, and types and formats. You can do all sorts of definition, um, making them as visually pleasing as you need to make them uh, to keep them in your final documentation to make this something that you could easily present to someone else. Um, so whether that's just simple, easy to understand graphs or very colorful, uh, colorful, you know, detailed graphs, it's up to you. And then here we're performing the optimization. So here we have another collapse section and we're gonna protect this section. So performing the optimization, we're gonna enter a password that says you need to have a password to be able to change this expand collapsed area. And we've just set it to expand. So that means that without the password, you're not gonna be able to collapse it. And that's really important for a couple of reasons. One, if you want to make sure that somebody sees this information, you know that they're gonna see it, it won't accidentally be collapsed. Two, if you set it to the collapse state, then you make sure that nobody who shouldn't see this sees it. So if it's collapsed and you need a password in order to expand it, that means the only people able to see it are the people you give that password to. So protecting your intellectual property, protecting your information that's important to you. We also have this requirements verification section. So our compression ratio, our engine displacement, we're making sure that everything here is uh, within those ranges that we had earlier. So we're just double checking that our requirements are set. And of course, it, if this isn't crucial, you can collapse that as well. And then down here, we're looking at this design summary. So this we're actually pulling right from Excel. And if we click on it, it pulls up the Excel file that, uh, that we got it from. Uh, so if you wanna format it in Excel and bring it in, if you wanna format it if you want to bring it in from Excel and format it here, either one of those options is fine. Uh, but by bringing this in from, from Excel directly, you're going to be able to keep this information up to date. Now, if you change the Excel information, you can update it here. It's going to be automatically updated here because it's pulled live from that link. Um, and then the other thing is that if you have information in all of these different pages, all these different documents, and you want to be able to consolidate them here, it's going to be really easy to get to those documents and pages because if you click on the information that you're, you're looking at, it's going to take you right to the correct one. So we might have a bunch of Excel documents. Which one is it that's important to this page? Well, it's easy to find out because all you do is click on the table and it takes you right to that, that relevant page. And, and keeps you away from all of the irrelevant information that you might have in other Excel um, files. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is uh, our text. We're gonna look at what it looks like to start adding some new text. Here we're gonna include a reference. So that new hyperlink capability is a wonderful capability. All you have to do is type in the hyperlink. So here we're getting information from a website. This is where we got our compression ratio information. 
that's no problem. We want to make sure whoever reads this later, or if I read this later, that I know where I got it and, and that I can can validate that it that my equations are correct. So we're just going to type in whatever we want to name the hyperlink. It doesn't have to be the name of the website, and then we just link it to that website. So this is where we put in the address. Um, so you can name it however you want to name it, just like a another link that you might use, and then it'll take you right to that web page. Um, so this is a really great new capability that we have. Again, always improving, uh, making sure that it's easy to, to have a complete documentation. So here we've added an extra E to reference. It is spelled incorrectly, uh, at least in English, as far as I know. Uh, so now we're gonna look at our spell check. So here we can uh, add it to the dictionary if this is a scientific term that we want uh, to make sure is included. Uh, but we know that this is spelled wrong now. So we can use that spell check to check all of our work and you, you won't be bothered. You know, I know scientific information, engineering information sometimes has their own spelling, their own shorthand. Add those to the dictionary, no problem. And then all of the rest of the words, you know, all of your text, all of that information that you're including, you can use the spell checker for uh, and, of, and you can change that language. So we're on English right now. You can change that to whatever language you're working in and make sure that everything's spelled correctly. This is a, a great way to keep your document really professional. Uh, the whole point of MathCAD is to do that documentation while you're, while you're working. And we've included all of the visual, all of the graphical capabilities to really make this a polished document, uh, to make all of your graphs look really, really polished and, and finalized. So we wanna make sure that there isn't a spelling error in there. Um, and now you have that capability. So it's gonna watch out for you, just like it watches for your units. Uh, it's gonna watch out for your spelling. So circling back to talk about a little bit of a recap of what we talked about. Here we can come. Our customers, when we hear back from our customers, uh, a lot of the value that they take away from, from MathCAD Prime 6.0 is that MathCAD allows them to optimize those critical design and engineering processes because you really can't optimize if you don't know what you're working with. If you don't know what information you're using to get to that optimization, if you don't know what equations you're using or, or what's important. So starting with clean, organized calculations in an easy to access, easy to share manner, easy to understand is really, really critical in optimizing and getting an efficient engineering process. This is gonna to lead to improved product quality because of course, um, there aren't gonna be as many errors. Nothing's gonna be overlooked. You're gonna have all of the information that you need to create a really quality product uh, and, and minimize recalls and, and warranty claims. I'm gonna reduce your time to market. Uh, as you do this, it's gonna be quick and easy. You don't have to worry about different programming languages and getting confused in translation. Everything's gonna be easy for you to see and get you to market faster with, with less rework, less error, um, making that process really streamlined. And of course, that all works to reduce the product development costs, errors and rework and time and, and accidents. Uh, you know, those are gonna be delays and, and costly delays. So this is gonna help you reduce those as much as possible. This is all I had to show today. I can pass it back over to you now. Um, thank you everyone for your time. Thank you so much, Amelie. That looks amazing. Let me take the screen back and show you where you can find the new MathCAD 6.0. Uh, just go to novage.com and uh, who wouldn't want to bring this home today? Uh, let's go. Uh, thank you so much, Emily. Uh, jokes aside, I, I'm still hanging on uh, for a few questions. If, if anybody wants to uh, comment or ask, please type them in. And in the meantime, I also want to remind you that I've recorded this broadcast, so you can watch it again on Vimeo or YouTube. Just search for our channel, Novage. And no questions so far. Um, Emily was uh, very clear and her um, showcase of MathCAD 6 was uh, perfect. Thank you so much, Emily, again. And um, just, uh, you know, remember that we're here for, to answer all your questions over the phone. And uh, if you want MathCAD or other PTC product, just look for novage.com. 
Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great rest of the day.